Electromagnetic waves can be impacted by electrical charges. So most electromagnetic waves can propagate through the air above the ground until they reach what is called the ionosphere, which is an ionized region of the Earth's atmosphere. Ionized means that there are lots of free electrons and charged ions in that region of the atmosphere. As you can he see here, the ionosphere has many layers to it. The characteristics of these layers depends on the time of day as well as solar conditions. At frequencies above about 30 megahertz, the electromagnetic waves can, prob can make it through the ionosphere into space, which is why communications between satellites and the ground operate around 1 gigahertz. However, below th about 30 megahertz, the ionosphere starts to refract the electromagnetic waves to the point where they reflect back down to the Earth. At frequencies below but near 30 megahertz, the electromagnetic waves are reflected by the upper part of the ionosphere, meaning they propagate through a large part of the ionosphere first before they reflect. Since the ionosphere can be highly variable depending on the time of day and solar conditions and so forth, the impact of the ionosphere on these electromagnetic signals is not always well understood. Also, the longer amount of time that an electromagnetic wave spends propagating through the ionosphere, the more the ionosphere can attenuate the signal. So what if we lower the frequency even further, as we already imagined we might want to do for our geolocation system? It turns out that below about 100 kilohertz, or so, the electromagnetic waves are reflected by the bottom side of the ionosphere. And since these waves don't propagate through very much of the ionosphere, they experience less attenuation than the higher frequencies. So let's consider a geolocation system that operates somewhere below 100 kilohertz. If the radiation from the transmitter propagates horizontally from the antenna, and maybe up to about 45 degrees from the ground, I'll say about, then these waves are then reflected by the ionosphere. Then what happens once the reflection reaches the ground? Assume the typical ground parameters are sigma is 0.01 and epsilon is epsilon naught times 15. And since about 70% of the Earth is covered by oceans, let's also consider the electrical characteristics of ocean water as well. So this is for the ocean. Sigma is about 3.3, .3, and epsilon is about epsilon naught times 81.